Think Tech Hawaii. Civil engagement lives here. Okay, one block, one o'clock block. I'm Jay Fidel. This is Think Tech. This is uh, Hawaii, the state of clean energy. We're talking today about clean energy, but we're also talking about tax. How do I know that? It's because Tom Yamachiga is in the room. He's the president of Tax Foundation of Hawaii, and Ron Heller, he's a tax attorney. So it's tax and energy, the intersection. Welcome, welcome, gentlemen. Thank Glad. you. Glad to be here. So last time we spoke a few weeks ago, you mentioned the Kahiava tax appeal. I was so fascinated, and I'm so glad you're back to discuss it. You're an amicus in that case. And Ron, you represent Kahiaba Wind uh, in a project on Maui. Who wants to present the case? Raise your hand. Ron. Well, I'll, I'll give you the, the two-minute summary. Okay. Kahiaba has a bunch of big wind turbines over on Maui. If you've ever flown into the Maui airport, you've probably seen them on the mountainside. And they use those turbines to generate electricity that they sell to Maui Electric. The County of Maui has decided that those turbines are real property for purposes of real property taxation. And so they're taxing them on the value of the turbines. Which is substantial, I imagine. Yes. It's a millions. Lot, a lot more than the value of the land. Yeah, I mean, interesting. There, there's real property tax on the land, but then they're treating the turbines as if they were buildings and treating them as part of the real property for tax purposes. So that multiplies the value by maybe about 20 when you go from just taxing the land value to taxing the value of the turbines. The tax goes up by a factor of about 20 times. And that, that's what's at issue because Kahiava says those turbines are not buildings, they're machinery and equipment, and in fact they're removable. They're bolted in place, they can be unbolted and moved. I mean, they're, they're big, they're heavy, they're hard to move, but they could be unbolted and moved. Mm, mm, mm. How much money is involved in this particular tax appeal? How much tax? Well, there, there are two parts to the Kahiava project. There's phase one, phase right, two. one up the hill and one further up the hill, as I remember. Right, yeah. right. And in, in rough round numbers, the tax per year on each segment is between 400 and 450,000. Okay. And, and I can say that because it's all public record sure. anyway. I could ask that because it's all public record. <laughs> yeah, and his is not the only project that's involved in the appeal. There's, all, there's, there's also one other project. Yeah, oh, uh, at, at uh, um, the ranch, Ulupalakua Ranch. Right, Awahi Wind Energy Awahi. runs yeah. that one. Same thing, they did the same thing there. Exactly the same issue. In fact, the two cases have been consolidated for argument before the Hawaii Supreme Court. Interesting. So does it make a difference as far as this tax is concerned about whether the, the turbine is actually in use? Let's take hypothetically, and this, this is actually the case in, uh, in the Ulapalakua, one, one of the turbines, uh, I think it's called Cupola, flew off, broke, mm -hmm. you know, it just didn't, didn't, isn't there. And so that's not functioning. It's still there. You can see it in the pictures. Um, do they still try to tax that particular turbine even though it's not functioning? I think so. I, I mean, I'm not sure of the exact facts because that one isn't my case. Um, but I think the, the county is still treating it as real property. Just like if you had an office building, the fact that you've got a lot of vacancies may arguably reduce the value a little bit, but it's still real property. Yeah, okay. Yeah, so it may go to value and not to, you know, whether it's taxable or not. So your position is that this is a, an, an illegal assessment. This assessment is not justified by the law. But, but the county did, in fact, redefine real property to include this kind of turbine, right? They did make that change. So well, you're saying let, me, that, let me give you some background please. on that. Yeah. Um, this is not the first time that the case is being litigated. This is actually the third time. The first, the first time uh, they went on a trip to the Intermediate Court of Appeals uh, under the definition in the you know, earlier tax years. And, and the Intermediate Court this of Appeals is, this basically... This is the county tax ordinance you're talking about. That's right. Yeah. Right. And so, so the tax ordinance basically was the same as it was uh, back in uh, 19, uh, 1981 when, uh, when, when the, the, the property tax functions were transferred uh, from the state to the counties. Okay, this, this, uh, you may remember this was part of the, uh, the con con in the late 70s. Uh, and that was one of the re recommendations which was uh, then adopted and 
uh, it, the implementation started in about 1981. Okay. So it took them, what, three years to yeah. get yeah. it together? 78 con con. So uh, what, what then happened was the definition at the time was, okay, uh, basically you, you look at two things. One is, is the, uh, the object that you're, t that you're seeking to tax permanently affixed to the property? And the answer is, and the answer is no. Okay? You, you can unbolt it, like Ron said. And the second thing is, is it a fixture, which, which means uh, is the, the operation or functioning of that property uh, basically helping uh, you, you uh, do what you need to do on that property? And, and the answer to that one is no, because you're not generating power to run that particular property in which the turbine sits. You're sending it out to the grid, and you're powering lots and lots of homes and businesses with lots, you know, good, clean, renewable energy. And so we, so we litigated that case, and the You've court been involved all yeah, along. The court decided in our favor, yeah. said, Cahiava's turbines are not real property. Okay, that was for tax years 2007 through 2011. County came the back. the Intermediate Court. Yeah, went to the Intermediate Court of Appeals. The county asked the Hawaii Supreme Court to grant certiorari and hear that case, said no. and they said no. Hmm. So that was the end of it. It was a final decision. Then for tax years 2012 and 2013, the county made a parallel assessment. We appealed again. Tax Appeal Court decided in our favor again. Uh, the county filed another appeal to the Hawaii Intermediate Court of Appeals but then voluntarily dismissed their own appeal, letting that judgment stand as a final judgment in Kahiyama's favor. But then what they did is they rewrote the definition in their ordinance to specifically say that wind turbines are real property. So the previous cases, the ordinance, uh, what did the ordinance say in the previous cases? In the previous case, it, it pretty much followed the common law definition of, of what is real property versus personal property. And as Tom said, there's two parts to the test. One is, is it affixed to the property in such a way that it cannot be removed without major damage? And the answer to that was clearly no, because you can just unbolt them and move them. And the second part of the test, the way it's worded in the ordinance is, is it quote unquote essential to the utility of the property? And the way the cases have explained that concept over the years is essential to the utility of the property means it's something that enhances the value of that chunk of land no matter what use you're going to put it to. It's not something that's limited to the specific business activity that you happen to be conducting, but it's something that just enhances the value of the land in general. So let, let me give you an example. If I've got a piece of land and I put in a paved parking lot, you know, with stripes and curbs and everything to make it all nice. That's going to be useful regardless of whether I'm using that piece of land for a factory or for a retail store or for apartments or a bowling alley or whatever. I mean, it's, it just generally increases the value of the land regardless of what kind of use I'm making of the property. But stripes would be part of the land because they're really embedded. Yeah. Right, but, but looking at it separately. How about from... another example, uh, something closer to a windmill, which, okay. which enhances the value of the land for any use? Sure. Okay, um, I've got a building, and I put a solar panel or solar array on the roof so that I can use the power to run the lights and the air conditioning and so on. Now, that's going to enhance the value of my building, and that's going to be true regardless of whether the building is being used as a warehouse or a factory or a hotel or a movie theater. Or regardless of, of the use of the property, it just generally enhances the value. The windmills that Kahiava has, in contrast, have no value outside of the power generation business. I mean, they're, they're not useful for any other purpose. You can't use them just to power that particular piece of property because it wouldn't be economic. It wouldn't make mm -hmm. sense. It and in costs, the case of Ulapalakua, that land is, is cattle land. It's pasture for cattle. Right, right. So it had really nothing to do with wind. Right. And it wouldn't make any sense to put those turbines there unless you were going to engage in the specific business of selling the property. So their equipment for that specific business as opposed to a general enhancement of the real property. That's the distinction. Mm -hmm. So we won the first case mm -hmm. based on applying those principles. 
Then the county said, we don't like that. We're going to rewrite the ordinance. This is the part that I really love. So what did they say in the rewritten ordinance? They specifically said towers and turbines used for the production of, of electricity for sale are real property. And they also said that any property that uh, increases the value of the realty it's on is also a real property. Okay. And, and wow. that's a problem because it can go way beyond wind, en wind energy. Yeah. So in fact, just to, just to unpack, the, in fact, if I go to one of these turbines, and I, I was at Ulupalakua, and I was, uh, I was at um, Kahiava too. I mean, the base of these windmills is like 10 feet wide or more. It's huge. Mm -hmm. um, but if you look down at the foot of it, you'll see a concrete pad, and you'll see bolts that big, and you'll see nuts on the bolts. Mm -hmm. And um, it costs a lot of money to get them up there and put them up, but if you ever had to remove them, it wouldn't be very hard. You undo the bolt, you put a truck out, you lay the, you lay the uh, shaft on the truck, and you're gone. That's simple. Yeah. Well, you need a pretty big crane big to pick truck, it up. But, crane. But, but, but the point is, it's, it's bolted in place. And, and in the first case, the county even stipulated that it could be removed without any damage. Huh. That, that was not an issue. Okay, yeah, sure, because they, they thought they got by that by redefining what's, what's taxable. No. Well, that sounds very reasonable, doesn't it? You just changed the tax law to meet the, the decision that had been entered earlier. I mean, and, and, and isn't it true that an ordinance can, can change the common law in this country? Isn't it true? Sure, but the county was granted the power to tax real property. What they've done is expanded that definition now to tax something that had already been determined to be personal property and not real property. It's, it's as if you know they're taxing your house with the real property tax, and then they say, well, we're going to write a definition that says if you park your car in the garage, we get to tax the value of the car, too. <laughs> right? If they write that definition, that doesn't make your car real property. It just means they're putting the wrong label on it. They're calling it real property when it isn't. So Yeah, it's, it's basically scope creep uh, as, 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 it, as it applies to real property <laughs> this tax. It's really funny, actually. I, there's a certain, I hope you appreciate that, there's a certain sense of humor going on here. Yeah, and do you know what I mean by scope creep? No. It means the, the scope of the real property. Scope, S-C-O-P-E, scope. scope. Right. The scope of, of, the, the, of the definition is creeping. Is creeping up. Okay. Right. And if, if they can do what they're doing in the Kahiava case and just redefine the towers and turbines as real property, then they can also write a definition that says your car parked in your garage is part of the real property. Yeah. I mean, every, every business that has, you know, valuable things on it, like, you know, a, a, a medical clinic with an MRI machine or... Wow. Or, or, or um, uh, manufacturing businesses like bakers with, um, you know, ovens and, and mixers and, uh, you know, process machinery, ma manufacturers of all types, uh, even the, the older body shops with their, you know, with their specialized devices, right, that, that, that work on cars. All of them are at risk with this new definition because any and every one of these machines could be real property under the definition that it increases the value of the real property in which it sits. Okay, this is in front of the uh, state Supreme Court right now. And before we go to break, Ron, can you, can you tell the people what Pandora's box is all about and why we study that in law school? <laughs> <laughs> well, the idea is you, you start out by doing something that seems relatively narrow and, and limited. In this case, you know, it only affects wind turbines, and there are only maybe, what, four or five companies in the state that operate wind turbines, right? But if they can do this, they can apply the same theory in a lot of other areas, as Tom says, and who knows where it's going to get to in the long run. Yeah. And the other part of that is about incentives and disincentives. The fact is that um, we have some new installations going in in Oahu and elsewhere where solar is way cheaper than wind as it exists. So if you start applying real property tax in this, in this quantum right. um, to wind facilities, which I think are very important in the, in the array, the portfolio of renewable energy, 
then you're really putting a burden on the wind developers uh, that's worse than before. Let's take a short break, we'll come back, and we'll find out exactly what you guys argued in your briefs. Ooh, we'll be right back. Aloha and mabuhai. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Aloha, I'm Wendy Lowe, and I'm coming to you every other Tuesday at 2 o'clock, live from Think Tech Hawaii. And on our show, we talk about taking your health back. And what does that mean? It means mind, body, and soul. Anything you can do that makes your body healthier and happier is what we're going to be talking about. Whether it's spiritual health, mental health, fascia health, beautiful smile health, whatever it means, let's take healthy back. Aloha. Okay, Tom Yamachika, president of the uh, Hawaii Tax Foundation, Ron Heller, uh, a tax attorney. Wow, what a fabulous group to be here today talking about a case that is pending in the state Supreme Court over the attempt of Maui County to tax wind turbines as real property. Wow, exciting. Why is it exciting? You guys, you know, we wanted to know during the break, why well, I think this is funny. It's because you go to law school, you bang your head against the property course, which in most law schools is a full year course. It's one of those fundamental courses you have to take right away so you can appreciate real property in our, in our society. And they teach you about fix, fixtures. They teach you what Ron said a fixture was. And now we have, we have a, 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 a county here in, in Hawaii Day telling us that, no, 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 it's not a fixture, it's something else. Uh, this is why it seems funny to me. Yeah, I mean, one, one other thing that you may want to think about is that uh, the definition, the common law definition of property is used in other you know, tax contexts, like, for example, depreciation. Uh, you get to depreciate things that are used in your business, but you don't get to depreciate real property because it doesn't have a useful life, right? It's just, it's just there and, and, and it keeps, keeps existing forever. Um, there, is, there is something called uh, the investment tax credit. You know, which which we still have in Hawaii uh, through through the the, the capital goods um, tax credit, and it awards you a credit for personal property, and not for real property. Okay, um, I'm I'm sure that the credit was taken for these turbines. It uh, was, and that's that's one of the arguments we make in our brief is that the county is taking a position that is inconsistent with both state law and federal law, because both the state and the IRS consider these turbines to be personal property as opposed to real property. In fact, when they were installed and they applied for the, the excise tax credit that Tom just mentioned, you know, the, the state agreed with that and said, yeah, they qualify, you know, allowed the credit. Um, so that's effectively a determination that they're not real property, that they're tangible personal property. So, um, you, you win in the Intermediate Court of Appeals on this, as before, um, and now you're in the Supreme Court, um, and uh, they file the opening brief. That is the Maui County, a corporation council of Maui County files the right. opening brief to try to upset the Intermediate Court ruling in your Well, favor. we didn't go through the Intermediate Court in this appeal. Okay. We, we went to the intermediate court last time. Uh, this time, we won at the tax appeal court level, the trial court level. Directly. And then the county, well, county appealed to the intermediate court of appeals, but before they heard it, the county asked the Supreme Court to take it direct, and they did. Okay. Oh, so it jumped the intermediate court. Right. So it's the burden, though, of the county of Maui to right. make opening, opening brief on this. Right. What was in their brief? Basically, the county's argument is that they have complete and total power over the taxation of real property, and that, at least in their view, includes the power to define what is real property. And, and it is true that the Constitution, the state Constitution, gives the counties control over the real property tax. That was something that was just in, you know, 
public view in terms of the proposed constitutional amendment because the state wanted to impose a state level property tax and the counties were fighting it saying no we have control of the real property tax right. that's our turf right. right and the constitution does give the counties complete control over real property tax but the, the key question the critical question there is what is real property because the constitution says the counties have the power to tax real property what does real property mean when it's used in the constitution yeah sure. and, and, and to to kind of you know further expand on that uh, the state has the ability to tax whatever it wants the counties don't the counties can only tax what they're given the power to tax it's derivative from the state constitution uh, well they can get they can get power to tax either from we the people you know through through the constitution or by state statutes so okay. if, if the state legislature gives the counties the power to tax then they can do it and they've and they've done so for like uh, the county gas is, tax. is that what they argued here that they had the power yes yes on the basis of what language the constitution which says that the the counties are given the power power to tax real property so okay. and, and they're, they're changing the yeah. meaning of that term well but th there are some supreme court decisions in hawaii that say that the counties have very broad power over the taxation of real property mm. so we're, we're not disputing that i mean they they do have the power to tax real property and they do have very broad power over real property taxation but the question is, can they define real property to mean something that goes beyond what the common law would have regarded as real property? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, and I, I suppose inherent in what you just said is that, well, in the state constitution, you could redefine what real property is. Sure. And in the state statute governing this, you could redefine what real property yeah, is. Yeah, if, if the state constitution said real property includes turbines, we'd lose. But the state constitution just says they have the power to tax real property. It doesn't define what real property means. And our position is, therefore, what it has to mean is the accepted common law the accepted meaning of the term customary real property. Definition, yeah, and, yeah. And, 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 you know, and what we said in our brief uh, was... This is in your amicus brief right, that you filed. Right. Uh, was was a, a derivative of that, namely, you know, the power to tax real property didn't exist by, you know, in a vacuum. The state exercised that authority for years, and then the, and the 78 Con Con transferred it to the counties. So upon transfer, they've had to have some understanding of what it was that when was it was transferred. Transfer. Right. So, so uh, there was another constitutional provision that said, hey, you counties have to keep the same, uh, uh, the same provisions, the same exemptions, the same rates, the same everything for 11 years after the transfer. Okay, so at the time of transfer, there was a common understanding of what was going on, all, uh, uh, and the statutes and the, and the ordinances of all four counties read the same thing. Okay, so that was the common understanding, that's what went over, and that, I think, defines what real property is that the, car was give, the, the, the county was giving taxing power mm. over. Okay, so if they want to define real property and, and tax fewer things, that's fine. But if they want to tax more things, wait a minute, they didn't get that authority. Yeah, yeah. Yes, but I still think it's funny. You <laughs> still think it's funny. <laughs> so, so were your briefs the same? You know, usually it's not exactly the same. You know, the principal brief would be by the party, Kahiyama Wind. Mm -hmm. You'd file an amicus brief, you'd probably add value in some way. What did you say? Well, um, Aran's brief was primarily on the common law definition, mm -hmm. and you know, he, he got that from various sources. I said, you know, I don't care what the common law definition was. There was common agreement in 1981 about what was going over, and that's what you got to, you know, that, that, that's what they're bound by. Mm -hmm. Well, it is common law of sorts. It's the common law of practice, no? Yeah, and we get to the same place, obviously. We just get there through slightly different routes. What I'm saying is, if you ask, what did the drafters of that 1978 constitutional amendment think they were doing mm. when they gave the county the power to tax like real property? Committee reports or something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you can look at those too. But, but my point is, you know, they wrote an amendment that said real property. What did they mean by that? I think the, the only answer that makes sense is what real property was generally understood to mean at the time they used those words. Sure, and in fact, in those days, there were no such thing 
as well, not in the same sense, as wind turbines are today. But, the, but there was a well-established body of law of when and how personal property becomes part of real property. Yes. And, and clearly it can. I mean, if I have a stack of bricks and a bag of mortar, that's personal property. Yeah. If I build a house, it that's becomes part of the real property. And that's been going on for 500 years or right. more. Right, and, and my point is there's a well-established body of law that says exactly when that personal property becomes real property instead. What is the test? Yeah. That was understood in 1978. Yeah. And presumably that's what the members of the Constitutional Convention uh, and the public thought it meant in 1978. Mm -hmm. yeah. Right, when they used the term real property, we're yeah. saying they must have meant what everybody thought real property meant at that time. Okay, so um, do, have we covered what the government would have said in response to your arguments? Well, I mean, th there, was, there was one other thing that, that, that I thought was fascinating, and uh, a lot of the county's brief was, was um, spent on, you know, criticizing the previous appellate court decision. You know, remember how we said uh, that the intermediate court uh, gave Kahiava Wind a victory and um, uh, the county tried to get the Hawaii Supreme Court to take it and they didn't take it? Well, uh, the, the, and the county comes up in this brief and says, under, under the Supreme Court's supervisory power, you can, you, you know, you can correct this decision if it's wrong. Wait a minute. So they want to re-argue the prior decision. Yeah, the, which is a different case, really, because the, the, it is the documents case. were different. The ordinance was different. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah, I mean, we, we have the legal doctrine of race judicata, which basically says if, if parties have litigated a case to a final judgment uh, and it's, you know, it's, it's become final, then those same parties cannot re-litigate the same issue, right? But the county at this point is effectively asking the Supreme Court to go back and re-decide right. the same questions that the intermediate right. court decided before. That's entirely inappropriate. Before. So, but you don't, you don't know what the Supreme Court's going to do. Uh, you told me before the show began that a month from now they'll have argu arguments, um, right. and the county will go first. It has the burden. You'll follow. Amicus, will you get a chance to argue? No, no. Oh, you typically, get, you'll be there, won't you, Tom? I'll be there. <laughs> but but Amici don't get to argue I mean, unless. Unless some special arrangement is made. Okay, so. Yeah, the, but the other taxpayer will also be there, uh, Oahi Wind Energy. Oahi, too. Because okay. it's a combined appeal combined, of the two cases. Consolidated, yeah. yeah. Very interesting. So, I know lawyers don't like to make predictions, but I wonder if you could give me what you think is going to happen at that hearing and in the decision to follow. Well, well typically the justices will ask tough questions of both sides. And then um, they'll take the matter under advisement, which, which means they'll think about it. And then, you know, some months or years later, then this decision will pop out. Yeah, and there's no way of knowing how long it's going to take. I mean, it, they could decide within a few months or they could take considerably longer to think about it. Um, I, I'm not going to make a prediction at this point, but I will say that, you know, I, I think the issues have already been laid out pretty well in the briefs. And I expect the court will, you know, ask all the questions they need to really figure it out. I'm, I'll make a prediction. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> I'm confident the position you guys have expressed is correct. And I think the Pandora's box problem here is a pretty big one. And I think uh, everyone who has gone to law school really does have a sense of what a fixture is. Right. And, and this sort of violates a lawyer's education, what they've done here. Um, the other thing is, and we talked about this before, before the show, is that this would be a disincentive for wind. Wind doesn't need any disincentives. It has enough trouble in staying, right. in staying afloat. Um, so uh, as a matter of public policy, the Supreme Court really should not allow this kind of penalty to wind operators. Yeah. In, in fact, our state has an express goal of getting to 100% renewable energy of course. by the year 2045. 20, yeah. So, I mean, to get there, obviously, we need more wind, more solar, more alternative sources of energy. Yeah. And, you know, increasing the tax burden on wind projects just seems like the wrong way to try to do it. Right, and conceivably also on solar, because if you can, if you rule this way on wind, you know, it does have implications to use the same precedent against solar. No? Yeah. No. So if you win, and, it, and my recollection is in the tax appeal court, you have to pay the tax in order to make the appeal. 
with real property taxes. Real, yes. real property tax. So they, they taxed uh, Kahiava and, and uh, also Oahe. Um, and then Kahiava and Oahe had to pay the money in, whatever was taxed, right or wrong. Mm -hmm. And then when it's uh, reversed, hopefully it will be knock wood, um, you get a check. Am I right? Yes. That'll be nice. Yeah. And then the project has a remaining lifetime that's part of this whole thing, too, because if, if the county wins, they're going to keep on assessing it year after year after year. If Kahiava wins, they won't have to pay that tax year after year after year. So there's, you know, the, the value here is not just the potential refund, but the future years for the rest of the project. Yeah. And, and similarly situated projects as well. Okay. I mean, you guys, um, you know, you know pub, the public is not involved, but I wonder if you could tell the public, it's, it's camera one over there, what you'd like to leave them with, what message you would like to leave them with. It's camera one's right over there. Ron, you first. Okay. Well, I would say the key thing here is that if there's no limit on the county's power to define real property any way they want, then they can tax anything. They can tax the car that's parked in your garage. They can tax the manufacturer's equipment. They can, they can expand to tax a lot of things that we would not normally think of as real property, that we would consider personal property rather than real property. But, I mean, if they're right, there's no limit. Yeah. This would be bad policy. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah, I mean, certainly you need to set some limits uh, on the exercise of, of governmental taxing power. You know, you, you, don't want, you don't want scope creep. Creep, 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 creep. Scope creep. Yeah. Yeah, the other thing you don't want uh, is a situation where uh, you're actually doing this kind of deceptive trick on the law. Uh, if the counties need money, uh, they have the real property tax power. All they have to do is raise the rates. They can do that at the county council any Tuesday. Mm -hmm. So it's politically unpopular, of course, and somebody will, you know, get a lot of votes against him for, or her for having, you know, passed that tax increase. But the fact is, if they're desperate for money, they need money for police, fire, and infrastructure, you should just raise the rates. It's easy. <laughs> yeah, but it comes with consequences. It comes to consequences. Thank you, Ron. Thank you. Thank you, Tom. Thank you, Jim. Great to have you here. Wish you well on that case. Thank you. Aloha.